What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm really excited to bring you this unboxing and first flight of the brand new DJI Avata 2. Let's get started. So here we have the box of the DJI Avata 2 which is the fly more combo and then we have another little box with the ND filter set which will open in a second because I'm dying to open up this package first. So the Avata 2 with the fly more combo we have three batteries we can see some of the things inside but I don't want to watch the pictures I want to see the real deal. So let's open up the box. And the first thing we will see is the sling bag which holds everything inside. So DJI loves using these sling bags or shoulder bags for all of their fly more kits. So lots of stuff inside. Uh, let's start with this little pocket first as I really want to kind of keep the most important things for last. Let me just take everything out. First, we have some spare props, which are labeled A and B, so you never put them on the wrong side, which is very, very important for FPV. Not only for FPV, it's important for everything that flies. So we have a USB-C to USB-C cable. I don't need that for now. We have a little wrench tool to tighten the props. Here, I assume we have some dioptic filters or whatever they are called, corrective lenses, yes. So if you're wearing glasses, you might want to use some of these to uh, properly um, see through the goggles. We have this, I'm not even sure how it's called, but forehead pad. Yes, this is a forehead pad to protect the goggles and maybe to, uh -huh. okay, I see. Use the additional forehead pad if the lenses are too close to your eyes. Okay, so this is not for protection, this is to kind of make it more comfortable for you if the lenses are too close to your eyes. What else we have here? USB-A to USB-C cable for connecting your smartphone. Then we have all of the different quick start guides, the light cut app, which you can scan and download, some stickers. This is something relatively new from DJI. They started to include stickers inside their packages. Now. Let's open up, wow, is this the new RC Motion Controller 3? This is tiny. I never had a clue that this will be so small because the previous, the previous uh, RC Motion controls were kind of taller. This one literally just fits in the palm of your hand and doesn't stick out much more than that. Seems very comfortable and uh, since that's the device that you will be using with the Avata 2, at least for the most part, as of right now, I don't have a remote controller included in this bundle. I think it will come at a later time. So this is important to be comfortable in your hands. So uh, I'm curious to see how this will work with the Avata 2. So let me just move these out of the way a little bit because we are getting to the most important parts of this. Yeah, let's, let's open up the goggles first. I'm super curious about the goggles 3, especially after the rumors that they have cameras on them, built-in cameras, so yeah. Wow. Okay, so this is a new design actually that I'm seeing here. So we have the goggles. Wow. So we have the goggles with the same, pretty much very similar, or should I say the same design as the goggles Integra or the goggles 2. But now we have these cameras here on the front and we have different types of vents here on the front as well. So these cameras will help you see the surroundings around you. I'm not sure, okay, so this is the forehead pad. <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> controversial, I think. Uh, because now it seems like the goggles themselves have a forehead here. So let me just put them on very quickly so I can... Okay, we have... We have a really weird material here. Um, and it's like... Okay, let's, let's check it out. Let's check it out first. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I see. I see now. So this thing attaches to your forehead pretty much or it's just slapped on your forehead. And then from there, you can actually move these around. You can kind of feel their different positions to put them closer or a little bit far away from your eyes, depending on how much you want them to, to stick to your face. Because some people have some problems with light leak and stuff like that here, because of these little curtains, if I can say that, you won't have this issue. It's like filling all the little gaps from the light around you and it's complete pitch blackness here inside the goggles. And <laughs> I can only assume this is looking ridiculous, but it's working uh, as of as of right now, as my first impressions, uh, it seems to be working. There was no light leak, no light spill from the side because of these curtains. <laughs> so yeah, really interesting new design of the Goggles 3. Now we have the battery charger. This is the charger that can hold all three batteries and we seem to have two batteries here. Very traditional from DJI, very similar to other drones from their lineup, mostly from their camera lineup, but this is the, the charging brick, or should I say the charging cradle. And then I think there's only one more thing that is left inside the bag. Here it is, empty. We don't have anything left. So let me just put it away. And here we have the DJI Avata 2. I've never seen it before. So these are my genuine first reactions. Only on the photo on the box. And <laughs> wow, it is different. It is definitely different. It looks a little bit more like flat and a little bit wider. So it definitely has a different shape. It is looking like a real Cinewhoop now with, you know, bigger sized propellers, or at least it seems that way. I'm not, not even sure I have to compare it to the Vata 1, which by the way, I will do soon in a video that's coming very, very soon. But yeah, we have some, uh, some stickers here that indicate a lot of things that we should know before flying with the Vata before even activating it. Wow, that camera is massive. So we have a new sensor size on this camera. This is going to, to record similar type of video as the Osmo Action 4. So it will have better night capabilities. It has a be bigger, better sensor, which records uh, in, in higher quality pretty much. And the battery is, the battery seems to be a lot bigger or because it has another shape, another type of shape, um, it feels bigger. But the whole drone feels very, very different. It, it pretty much, from what I know about this drone, it's upgraded in all the right places compared to the Vata 1. So I'm really, really curious to see how this, this thing handles and how it flies and we, we seem to have a little bit of a uh, of a base shape here that is kind of like yeah the, the base of the drone and then the drone is kind of slapped on top of it so this frame shell uh, is divided it, it's even in a different color so it's it's different from the the top it comes with this black um, reinforced plastic or I'm not even sure what type of material that is. I will have a lot to learn about this drone so don't quote me on anything that you hear in this video because I am seeing this thing for the very first time similarly to you. So hopefully this will be a good product. I'm super curious and super excited to start flying with it straight away. I just need to activate it, bind everything together if it's not bound yet and then it's go time. So by the time you're watching this video, I should have posted maybe a video or two already. So browse my channel if you want to see more videos and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the upcoming videos that I am going to prepare for 
or the Avata 2 for you. But now it's time to activate everything, charge all the batteries, and let's go for my very first flight with the Avata 2. Oh yeah, I forgot. The ND filter set. With all of that excitement, I forgot to unpack the filter. And the filters are extremely important, so I'm uh, happy to see that they are included in this in this package that I received. Because for cinematic videos, it's a must. It's just a must. So here we have the box with the filters. We have three filters inside, which are huge. Of course, understandably so, because the sensor size is much bigger, so the whole lens takes a lot more space now, so we need bigger glass to, to cover that. So we have ND32, ND16, and ND8. This should work for a variety of different weather and lighting conditions. Maybe an ND64 might be needed in case you're shooting in a very bright and sunny day, but we'll see about that for now. I think ND32 will be sufficient. So there you guys have it. Everything is unboxed. Let's go and fly this thing. Okay, here we go. First flight with the Avada 2. We're starting out in normal mode with the smart remote controller. And my first impressions is that the drone is really sensitive, like reacts really well to the movement of the remote, which I'm not sure will result in good footage, but for first flight, I think that's not really necessary. And the good thing with the Avada is the fact that you can always just let go of the controller and it will level itself, so you don't have to worry about hitting an obstacle. And this thing seems quite precise. The fact that you can just move around with your hand. And I was told by DJI that this is the preferred way for many people to fly their Avata. That's why they don't include the FPV remote controller in the bundle. And that's why I don't have one yet, but I will get one as soon as possible. So let's do a full speed test. Wow, wow. This is maximum speed. And this is really, really fast, but it's, it's kind of weird flying like this with just a, with, the, with this remote. I'm not so used to that remote, but I'm enjoying it because it's, it's quite nimble and, and sensitive, like I said. There are some people in the park, so I need to be careful. Okay, let's just move around and go back. This thing picks up speed very, very fast. And it is a little bit windy today. That's something that I also wanted to, to mention. Um, so now I am flying with this uh, new sensor that we have here on this camera. And for demonstration purposes, I have decided to use uh, the Rocksteady stabilization. So obviously you can turn that off and use Gyroflow, for example, to stabilize the footage yourself afterwards in post. But for this first flight video, I just wanted to, to see what the drone will, will do by itself. And that's always something that I prefer to do in my first flight videos. And if you notice, I am quite far from my takeoff point. Uh, so now we are getting lower and lower bit rate. I'm not sure if I'll be able to pass through this forest. So yeah, let's just go back. Let's just go back because I'm at one megabit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no problem. As soon as I got back, uh, as, so as soon as I turned around, I re regained all the signal back. So we have a better transmission on this drone. And with all of these trees, it's uh, it's so nice to be able to, to just cruise around and not having to worry too much about the signal. Obviously, there are some limitations, especially when you are flying in the, in the park like here, because we have a lot of obstacles, a lot of interference. So yeah, for now, this seems like a fantastic drone for cruising and it's, uh, it's really sensitive. That's one thing that I can definitely say. The signal seems very similar to the original Avata. I'm sure it's a bit better. So far, I can't really say, but I will switch to sport mode in just a second because 
Uh, I, I want to experience that as well. Now we're getting low signal as well here. So let's just turn back. And the way the signal degrades is it's really, whoa, that was close. The way the signal degrades is uh, actually nice because it's not so blocky. I mean, it is blocky, but at the same time, you can still see what's going on. It's not just a huge mess, uh, but it's still, you know, not ideal the way that it degrades, but um, it's, it's okay. So you can understand that it's time to stop pushing and, and start turning around. There we go, sport mode. Wow, wow. <laughs> it's screaming like crazy. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, I was not expecting that. The thing is really, really moving. I can definitely say that it's uh, it's impressive how quick it moves and uh, yeah I'm sorry for my bad controls I'm really trying to get used to that it's not ideal to to fly this drone with with a remote like this if you're trying to get super smooth cinematic shots at least you need some experience with it and uh, as of right now I don't have that much experience with this remote and the way it's uh, it's made to be uh, the way that it's configured, it's uh, quite sensitive for my taste, but still. Uh, so we've been flying for six minutes. We've been cruising. I've been trying some uh, fast, fast uh, maneuvers here and there, and we've been doing it for six minutes and we are at 71% battery, which is really impressive. So the battery life that DJI uh, is uh, stating that the Avata 2 can give you is about 24 minutes, I believe. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's, it was 24. So that's really uh, quite a lot for a CineWoop of this size with a battery like this. So if you if you can actually manage to to be smooth with the with the remote controller, it it feels amazing how you're gliding over the the surface and you can do a lot with this drone, I'm sure, um, especially with the, the new improved sensor size, which is one over 1.3. Uh, that is very similar to what the um, Action 4 has. So it's pretty much an uh, Action 4 uh, sensor in, in this drone with D-Log M uh, as opposed to d like on the original Avata. Now we have an improved flat color profile that we can color grade and D-Log M is fantastic for color grading. So I'm a huge fan of that. And right now I'm, I'm flying in flat color profile uh, and I will be grading that later. You can of course always check my LUTs because I have some, uh, some LUTs available for D-Log M that are pretty cool and easy to use. But for cruising, this drone seems fantastic. I cannot wait to actually get my hands on the FPV Remote Controller 3 which will really unlock the full potential of this drone so you can fly it in manual mode. Yes, I don't, I don't want to go here. I will turn back. And the best thing about this drone is the fact that you can just let go and it will hover in, in place. Uh, that's pretty much the, the best feature. And of course, the fact that it has built-in GPS and the GPS rescue is super good on these drones from DJI. Now, I want to try a new feature called Easy Acro. Uh, and we'll try that. I can, I just need to go into the menus. Uh, so let me just do that. I will use my buttons here to, to go into, into that and enable easy acro. Okay, so we have a little tutorial with the joystick. Okay, so check this out. Let's see the 180 degree drift, which is a new acro, easy acro uh, move. So you're moving forward and when you press left or right on the joystick, the drone just drifts and starts flying backwards automatically. So you're still pressing the accelerator, but the drone actually moves back. That's one of the reasons why this drone has backwards uh, facing sensors. So let's do it once more. And I, I assume it will stop before hitting those branches, but it's really nice. So you're going towards an obstacle or something and you just do that drift. And the drone just does that automatically by you 
only need to select the direction left or right and that's it so now we have flip and of course you only need to select the the direction so you can do right left front and back so the drone kind of rolls uh, or flips it's really really nice and of course you can do that while you're doing something in the air while you're moving and it, it's doing it like very smoothly uh, it's it's a bit you know yeah it's not really the best cinematic move but i i guess it's it's usable um, if you want to incorporate that in your footage so let's just do a little roll yeah it, it kind of kind of fakes you being in in manual mode and you know kind of makes you show off your skills without really having them <laughs> but uh i like it i like it it's a, it's a nice predefined movement that uh you can use with this drone uh, let's just go back because i saw there are some people here and i want to disturb them and uh okay we are getting our low battery warning so we'll need to land but this is pretty much my first impressions of the drone so far it's fantastic i'm really enjoying it and it seems like a, a really nice uh first impression okay that was it for my very very first flight with the vada 2 this was genuinely my first time ever putting this drone in the air so so far i can say that it was a fantastic first experience with the new RC Motion Controller 3 with the new improved sensor size with the better camera quality the drone flies fantastically and I cannot wait to put it in manual mode so I can do some acro moves myself as soon as I have the FPV Remote Controller 3 I will do that but for now this is everything I have for you from today's video thank you so much for watching it this is Mike from Drone Supremacy I'll catch you in the next one ciao